This is a 3D model of a VW engine. There are so many things that we can simulate here. But we're going to start with this input shaft. I want to understand what kinds of torsional forces it's put under when it's inside the engine. We'll start by coming here to the top right and clicking on the App Store. We'll come here to Simulation. We're going to scroll down and find CAE Plex. We'll select from here the free version. And then we'll come back to our model. We'll come down here to this plus sign for a new tab. I'll come the applications and I'll select CAE Plex from the drop down menu. We're going to select rear drive shaft from the list and I'm going to click on create case. The first thing we want to do to simulate this part is to come here to material properties. You'll notice that by default we have 200 for the Young's modulus, 0.3 for the Poisson's ratio, and 7800 for the density. Yes, the software is assuming that this part is made of steel. Let's come here and add a fixture condition. We're going to select this back face and we'll select a few other of these faces and I'll select this wrist face as well. So now we have those couple of faces and these are going to be the faces that we use to fixture the part and hold it in place. And with that, we're going to come to add external load condition and we're going to make sure moment is selected because we're going to be using a torsional twist force. And for the faces, we're going to select these interfaces, this flat face here. We're going to select these couple of faces and this back wrist face. And so we have all of these selected. You could see them here and cycle through them. For the force, we're going to select 500 kilonewtons per meter because this is approximately the type of force that this shaft would see in the vehicle. And for the value of X, we're going to make it negative 120 millimeters. That will set it about 120 millimeters from the datum, which is in the center of the part. So we're going to come here to internal loads and we're going to set the weight to be 9.8. And that's just gonna remind the software that this part does weigh something. And for the temperature distribution, we'll set it to be 80 Celsius. That's around what we could see in the vehicle, but really just a reference point so that we understand there is some heat applied to the part. All right, let's come here to the next step to mesh the part. And what the software is going to do is it's going to convert the part, which used to be a CAD model, now into these little elements. And these elements are 2.1 millimeters in size, and they have... 82 10 to the third nodes. The nodes are the points where those lines connect. So we're essentially creating a grid, a 3D mesh out of the model, the 3D model. And you'll notice that if I move the target nodes up and increase them and move the global element down, I can further refine the model. So you see the way it looks now. If we were to refresh the model, I have increased the mesh a little bit to get a little bit of better quality. And as you could see, I think that it represents the original CAD model quite well. With this, we're going to come here to results. Here are the results. When we move the warp, you'll notice that this shaft is both rotating but also bending. So as it's rotating, it's bending upward. And if we push it, past kind of the limit, you could see that it's actually deforming and getting larger. This is really just an exaggeration of what would happen in real life. So we're going to keep it in a smaller range and I'll move it just a little bit and you could see the warp that's happening. It's moving away from the center line. We can also come here to layers and legend and we can change the way that the part is viewed. If we look at displacement in X, it's going to give us some pretty interesting results. If we warp it from here, you'll notice that the top of the part is blue and the bottom is red. And the reason is because it's being displaced by 215 millimeters in total, especially in the bluer parts. So this is actually pretty helpful because it's telling us dimensionally what's going on when the assembly is warping. I don't think that this simulation of this drive shaft is a good representation of reality. The reason is because if we go back to our assembly model of the engine, you'll notice that this shaft is supported by this bearing and also a little bit by this sleeve. 
So there's really a lot more support here on the shaft that's not represented based on our fixturing. So what we're going to do is we're going to come back to our here problem and we're going to come to fixtures and I'm going to add this face and this face to our fixture faces and I'll come here to mesh and mesh the part once again. Once we mesh our part, you're going to see that we now have more fixtures applied. And I'm gonna come here to results. Let's see how this affects the model. The megapascals of force are not applied to these areas. And the reason is because these are fixed, but the rest of the model can move freely and the force is applied near the end. So if I move the warp, the shaft actually moves out of place of the axis. This simulation better represents the forces that this shaft experiences during operation. Now let's come back to our problem set, and this time we're going to select only the teeth. So I'm going to deselect the load areas by just clicking on them, and I'm going to select every single one of these tooth faces. This will be our most accurate simulation because it's placing the load where it would actually be applied in real life, even though it took longer to select every single one of these faces. We'll come to mesh, and now we'll come to results. This is the most accurate simulation that we've done so far. Here's why. The load is applied to the teeth only. If I rotate and show you the axis, Running through the part, you'll notice that when I increase the warp, the part warps but does not leave the center line. It is not warping and moving out of place. Let me show you what the body looks like. As I increase the warp, eventually it becomes larger. This is really just an exaggeration of what would happen in real life. The teeth are actually warping. This side is higher than this side. This neck is experiencing a stress riser. You could see that there's a lot of force here because there's somewhat of a sharp corner in here, which shows the importance of having smoothness on parts like this. You can see how in the beginning stages, it's pretty accurate to what it could look like in real life under really high load. But as we move it to the end, it becomes ridiculous. So we really want to take these simulations with a grain of salt and we want to see what we can learn from them and see little areas of forces where we didn't think that there would be displacement, but there actually is. I hope that this helps. Please follow along for more simulations like this.